it's about finding that that balance you know hmm. maximizing your potential in every area of your life All right, so this deep dive is gonna be a fun one. Yeah, this one's really interesting. We're gonna be diving into the world of entrepreneurship today, something I know you've been wanting to learn more about. Absolutely, I'm fascinated by people who can just like create something out of nothing. Right, and the story we're about to unpack is a perfect example of that. We're talking about Matt Tack. Oh, this guy's a trip. You sent over this interview with him, and uh, wow, I mean, talk about a journey. Yeah, it's not your typical straight line to success, that's for sure. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Even as a kid, Matt was already showing signs of like that entrepreneurial spirit. Oh, totally. Like he was obsessed with baseball cards. Baseball cards, right. Everyone had those. But he wasn't just collecting them. He was trading them, like building up this whole inventory. But he had that hustle even back then. Oh yeah, big time. Like he knew which cards were valuable, which ones were in demand. That's incredible. Like he just instinctively understood the market, even <laughs> as a kid. Totally. And that's something I think a lot of people miss, you know, those early passions, those side hustles. They're not just hobbies. They're often the like the early training ground for entrepreneurs. I love that. It's like those experiences, even if they seem small at the time, they're shaping your mindset, your approach to like problem solving and opportunity. Exactly. But OK, so Matt's got this entrepreneurial spirit, but his path wasn't like a straight line to success. Right. There were some detours along the way. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like his dad was a big time athlete. So there was that pressure to follow in his footsteps. Oh, I see. Like family expectations and all that. Exactly. And, you know, Matt even went to college, got a degree, worked a nine to five job, the whole nine yards. Really? What kind of job? Accounting. Of all things. Accounting. Wow, that's about as far away from starting a business as you can get. Right. But even then, you can hear in the interview, he's like, restless, you know? It's just not scratching that itch. Exactly. That feeling of like, there's got to be more to life than this. I think a lot of people listening can probably relate to that. Totally. That feeling of being stuck, like your true potential is being wasted. So what did he do? Well, that's where things get interesting. He ends up moving to Washington, D.C. for his then-girlfriend, now wife. Okay, so a big life change, a fresh start. Exactly. And sometimes that's all it takes, you know, a new environment and a new perspective. Like it shakes things up, makes you reevaluate what you really want out of life. Right. And for Matt, that move to DC, it was a total game changer, both personally and professionally, it turns out. So he lands in DC, new city, new start. What's the next chapter for Matt? So this is where things get really interesting. Yeah. He dives headfirst into the world of real estate. Real estate? Okay, that's a pretty big leap from accounting. Right. But it wasn't just about, like, crunching numbers this time. Yeah. He saw an opportunity in the Airbnb world, you know? Yeah. That whole sharing economy thing was just starting to take off. Ah, I see. So he's spotting a trend, an opportunity to, like, build something of his own. Exactly. And it's important to remember, he had his wife's support through all of this. Oh, yeah. She seems like a total rock star from the interview, like really believes in him and his vision. Absolutely. In fact, there's this great story he tells about how she actually encouraged him to quit a job he hated. No way. Like it just gave him the green light to go for it. Pretty much. She basically said, go do whatever, like figure it out. Can you imagine having that kind of support? That's incredible. Talk about a leap of faith, both for him and for her. Totally. But I think it speaks volumes about their relationship, you know? Hmm that trust, that shared belief in his abilities. Absolutely. And that support, it clearly paid off. So how does he go from Airbnb to, well, full fueled? That's quite a journey. You're telling me, well, buckle up, because this part involves a bit of serendipity, maybe even a touch of fate. Matt meets Dr. Alessi at a co-working space of all places. Wait, Dr. Alessi, as in the full fueled Dr. Alessi? The one and only. It turns out they'd actually met, like, briefly years earlier. No way, really. Small world. Right. But the timing wasn't right back then. This time, though, something just clicked. They started talking, realized they had this shared passion for, like, helping people unlock their potential. And boom, the Full Fueled podcast is born. Well, it wasn't quite that instant. They started by collaborating on some projects, just kind of testing the waters. But the more they worked together, the more they realized they had this like this synergy, this shared vision that went way beyond just making a podcast. 
it's amazing how those partnerships can develop organically, right? Like you start with a simple collaboration and then it blossoms into something much bigger. Exactly. And that's what's so cool about Matt and Dr. Alessi's story. It wasn't some calculated business move. It was about two people with a shared passion, finding each other at the right time and saying, hey, let's do something awesome together. And full fueled, I mean, that's more than just a catchy name, right? It's like a whole philosophy. So full fueled, it's like more than just a cool name, right? They've really built a whole philosophy around it. Oh, absolutely. They break it down into these like six pillars, mind, body, work, fuel, movement, sleep. Mm -hmm. It's about finding that, that balance, you know, mm -hmm. maximizing your potential in every area of your life. Okay. So it's not just about like guzzling energy drinks and working 24 seven. No, no, not at all. It's about being intentional, mm -hmm. you know, making sure you're firing on all cylinders, but in a sustainable way. Like, taking care of your mental and physical health is just as important as crushing it in your career. Right. It's holistic, like you were saying. Exactly. And they don't just talk the talk. They walk the walk. You know what I mean? They give you actual practical tips for each pillar. So it's not just a bunch of motivational fluff. No way. Like, remember how we talked about Matt feeling stuck in that accounting job? Well, the movement pillar that really resonated with him. Makes sense. When you're feeling physically sluggish, it's hard to, like be creative and motivated in other areas of your life. Exactly. And they're not just talking about like hitting the gym seven days a week. It's about incorporating movement into your everyday routine. Okay. So like what? Taking the stairs instead of the elevator? Going for a walk at lunch? Exactly. Little things that make a big difference. They even talk about this idea of intentional discomfort. Intentional discomfort. Okay. Now you've lost me. So it's like pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, but on purpose. You know, mm. challenging yourself physically and mentally. Okay, I kind of get it. Like, no pain, no gain, but for your whole life. Exactly. Like, growth happens when you're pushing those boundaries, right? Right. Makes sense. Now, what about those downloads Matt talks about? That part really intrigued me. Ah, the downloads. Yeah, that's a good one. So he's talking about those moments of inspiration, those aha moments that seem to just, like, hit you out of nowhere. Oh, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like you'll be in the shower or out for a run and bam, brilliant idea. Exactly. And then like two minutes later, it's gone. The worst. So how do you capture those downloads? Matt's big thing is write it down immediately. Don't let it slip away. Okay. That seems simple enough. But is it really just random? Or is there a way to like make those downloads happen more often? Well, that's where things get interesting. Matt and Dr. Alessi, they believe those downloads, they're not just random. They're your subconscious mind working in the background. Okay, whoa. So like... Our brains are constantly making connections, even when we're not aware of it. Exactly. And the more you pay attention to those downloads, the more you cultivate that sense of mindfulness, the more often they seem to happen. So it's like a positive feedback loop. The more you listen to those inner nudges, the louder they get. Exactly. And that, I think, that's a powerful takeaway for anyone listening. We all have those moments of inspiration, those flashes of insight. You just have to be open to them. And ready to act on them, right? Yeah, totally. Well, I got to say, this has been a really inspiring deep dive. Matt Tack's story, it's about so much more than just building a business. It's about designing a life that's truly, authentically full-fueled. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. It's a great reminder that we all have that power within us, you know, mm -hmm. to shape our own narratives, to embrace those unexpected detours, and to create something truly meaningful with our lives. Absolutely. And on that note, thanks for joining me on this journey. Mm. Until next time. <laughs>